Good morning and happy Father's Day. Welcome all who are here to worship in person and all those who are joining us from distant places on Facebook. We give thanks that God has provided us with technology to help us do so many things. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I would remind you of the things in the announcements. First of all, you'll notice that we have a big thing there that says Help Wanted part-time receptionist. Um, Jenny is going to be here on Mondays for a while um, so that we aren't completely um, struggling um, as we continue to look for somebody. If you know of anybody, a little bit, uh, some really good tech skills would be nice, um, but it's 28 hours a week, so it's a nice part-time job. Um, hours can be worked out, so we have a wonderful opportunity for somebody to work in the church office. Um, and almost everything gets teamed up with Val, so you have plenty of support and opportunity for learning and sharing and doing. Um, and then we are ready for Western Fest week. Um, so this week during Western Fest, we have a group that are going to be walking in the parade. We've got a float that is under construction and will be done. So... If you can participate in walking in the parade, make sure that you um, contact the church office and let us know about it so that we have the t-shirts ready. And then you also know that we are continuing with um, the wrap program. Um, we have the box out there and the list of things that they need so that they can support people in times of transition and difficulty. And um, Check that out, because we'll be collecting those through the end of the month. Um, registration for BBS is underway, and so we have that going. Um, it will be August 5th through the 8th, and make sure you get in and get registered, because we are limited to 45 kids. So, you know, we have to keep the ratio of staff, volunteers, and kids so that we have safety and um, support. So make sure that you um, register quickly so that we get those numbers um, identified. Um, next Sunday will be a special service celebrating Western Fest um, and giving us an opportunity to sing and recognize how many ways God blesses us. Um, and then you will notice on the other side, we have three people up in the balcony that do tech work, and we figure it's time a few more people learned about this. So on June 30th, 
If you're just curious about what goes on and what it takes to do those, make it up to the balcony after church, learn a little bit about it, and then we'll think about having some other people consider becoming part of the rotation um, so that we can have people up there and lots of opportunity for learning and growth. Um, as you came in, you may have noticed the quilt in the narthex. Um, that is the Bonnie's Beauty. Um, Bonnie Erickson made the top for it and our ladies helped get it put together the rest of the way. It is being donated to Green Lakes Quilt Auction. So take a look at it and see the beauty that is there. Um, this week we'll be quiet in the office. Um, Saturday is men's Bible study, but it's also the Western Fest Parade. Um, so we have all of that. But just before service, I was told there's a special event today besides being Father Day, Father's Day. It's Vern Olson's 91st birthday. So Vern, would you wave at everybody around here? And then okay. Lynn. Can we um, sing happy birthday? So that's all of the announcements. So Vern, congratulations on 91 wonderful years. <clears throat> okay, we'll go on with confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we confess, confess that, that we have, have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are We're truly sorry and humbly repent. repent. In your, your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, sins known and unknown, and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. And now let us join in singing our gathering hymn, Have You Thanked the Lord? And we're going to just sing verses 1 and 3.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Responsively, Psalm 92, verses 1 through 4, 12 through 15. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody and the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work, at the works of your hands, I sing for joy. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap. Showing that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Our scripture reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10, 14 through 17. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, 
for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who might live no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Here ends the lessons. Thanks be to God. The reading of the gospel. Gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, what, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It's like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nest in its day. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and I would ask our children to come forward. I see a couple of them. Come on. Come on. Hi. How are you guys? Come on, sit sit down here. And Heidi, I'm going to ask you to try to zoom in on some of this stuff, so. We got some real little ones today. Come on. You know, we were just reading the gospel that told us about the kingdom of God. And, they t- and Jesus tells us in parables. Do you guys know what a parable is? Parables are stories. But they're stories that have extra meaning to them. So we have to keep asking, well, what's it really telling us? And in this case, Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Any idea what a mustard seed looks like? Well, I've got some mustard seeds here, so see how tiny they are? He says it's the tiniest of all seeds. Those are pretty tiny, aren't they? Can you see this? Can you see these mustard seeds? And Heidi, I don't know if you can zoom in so that others can see how tiny they are. But these tiny seeds grow into big plants. Because the kingdom of God keeps growing and getting bigger, including all of us. So I went online and said, okay, what can I find for pictures? 
because I know around here, mustard gets pulled out of the ground as soon as you spot it. So finding big pic pictures of mustard plants. But I found this one that's in Israel. And notice that there's a man standing there. And even with his arm raised, he isn't able to reach the top of the mustard plants. Those pretty cool? You like the looks of those plants? So for you guys to see, there's, the, there's that. But it also can grow all the way into being a tree. See? So I found these cool pictures online of trees and of plants to remind us that the kingdom of God keeps growing for us so that we keep nurturing and growing like the mustard seed because God wants us to share God's kingdom. And one of the ways that we get to help plant seeds is by telling people that Jesus loves them. So I want you today, after we, when you leave here, after we have our prayer, can you guys go and tell two people that Jesus loves them and it not be your parents? Tell somebody else. Think you guys can do that? We'll have you get some help, okay? All right. Shall we pray? Can you guys help me pray? Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have blessed us and that the kingdom of God is near and with us as we continue to celebrate your presence. Amen. All right. Go and tell two people that Jesus loves them. What a blessing it is to know that the kingdom of God has come near. And both parables today describe the king, what the kingdom of God is like. And I had to wonder, why is it that God would put two parables together to describe the kingdom of God? I'm so used to reading that the kingdom of God has come near that it started me thinking, Huh, yeah, I bet a bunch of people were going, well, what's the kingdom of God? And, well, where is this kingdom of God that's come near, huh? Those kind of immediate questions that we do when we're not certain. But Jesus accommodates by giving us these two parables. So I ask you, what do you think of when you hear the kingdom of God? Do you think of a physical kingdom like a country that has a single leader called a king? Or do you think about the kingdom being here in our lives right now, a part of us, and part that we are supposed to go out and scatter the seeds for? But as I told the kids, the two parables, that parables are stories that are supposed to give us extra meaning. So when you think about these two parables, what do they tell us about the king, kingdom of God? And in the first one, we're reminded that the kingdom of God keeps growing, and we don't know how. The people of God, we are part of that kingdom. And we have the privilege of being able to plant and scatter the seeds for the kingdom but it is the Spirit that does the growth. It is the Spirit that leads us. And Luther points this out to us in the explanation of the third article of the Creed. And I quote, I believe <clears throat> that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, and kept me in the true faith. <coughs> Excuse me. Just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in one common true faith. Daily in this Christian church, the Holy Spirit abundantly forgives all sins, mine and those of all believers, 
On the last day, the Holy Spirit will raise me and all the dead and will give to me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. We are dependent on the Holy Spirit to nurture us and cause the growth in all of us. We do not understand exactly how the Spirit does it, especially when we're the ones who are scattering the seeds. But there are times when God's the one who scatters the seeds. God becomes very present. That Holy Spirit becomes very sharp in being heard. And two stories come to mind with me. And both of them come from college. The one is about a couple that I connected to. She was in a class with me, and he was in seminary. And they were very careful about working out their class schedules so that they could hand off the kids, so that they didn't have to try to figure out babysitters. They just worked out their schedules so they could pass the kids off all day long. And they had a special commitment to him being in seminary because he tells the story of God calling him to be a pastor. He had gotten out of the Navy and was unfocused, unsure of what he should do next, was just kind of, and then he kept hearing a voice calling him my name. And he finally ended up in church going, I think I'm going crazy, but we'll go to church. And the pastor gave a sermon talking about being a pastor. And he heard a voice that sounded like shouting at him, that is what I want you to do. And it was clear to him very quickly that nobody else had heard that voice. It took a while for him to figure out exactly how to get through the process and what denomination he would do it in and all of those kind of things. But he was in seminary because God had planted that seed in him to get him there. And the other story is from a college classmate who had grown up in New England and was a farm kid and was used to um, pulling up daisies because they were weeds in the field. And so was rather shocked when she walked into the florist shop in Fort Worth and daisies were in the cooler. It's like, why in the world would you have those things? But that's the reminder that God's plantings don't always match to our understandings or our desires. But that leads me into that second parable, that mustard seed that starts out very small and grows to that large bush. One of the other things that I've learned about that plant is it's also got very strong roots. So even after you dig it up, even after you pull it out, it's very good at coming back. It's very hard to get rid of. And so is the kingdom of God. Once that seed is in you, that wonderful thing keeps coming back. So God's kingdom will not end. It will continue to grow and be renewed in growing, no matter how much the world may try to eliminate our faith and our connection to God. But that doesn't keep us from needing to continue to nurture our faith, keep growing in our understanding, keeping that kingdom of God claiming us and expanding that we still keep working on us to be that new creation in Christ that Paul talks about. And think about it for a minute. What makes Christians different in the world? Aren't we recognized by our love that we share as we scatter those seeds of God's love where we care about everybody and we are that new creation? that sees the good in everyone, and generally, we've got a smile on our face knowing that God's kingdom is filled with positive, loving experiences, and that that existence will continue to grow as we share it. And so God has gathered us into this community of faith. God has sheltered us and nurtured us through this community and others. And so we have the benefit of Jesus being there to teach us the deeper meaning of the parable that tells us of God's kingdom. We scatter the seeds again and again, not in careful rows, but wild and free. And then we sit back, we watch the seeds as it sprouts, 
From Jesus' teachings, we assist in the care for the plant as we teach the faith and proclaim God's word. The Holy Spirit, though, is the one in charge of how the plant grows, and each person is called by God to act in the world, and we celebrate those gifts as we also grow in our own faith and in sharing and providing the shelter that is that new creation in Christ. And most importantly, we come as thankful people to worship and give God the glory for the bountiful harvest that we share in God's kingdom here and now. Amen. Let us join in singing hymn number 734, God whose farm is all creation. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We come before the Triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Nourish our faithful people through gifts of word and worship. Guide the church in listening to the inter interrupting, interpreting your message of grace for this time and place in history. In your wisdom, lead us in expanding to reach the reach of your love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Nature sings your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Sustain the holy rhythms of creation, days and seasons, hibernation and activity, phases of the moon and the tides of the sea, Guide and support farmers as they work to support those rhythms with the crops they have planted. May these patterns assure us of our consistency. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise the lowly and humble, those in high regard. Rise up all who are victims of marginalization, discrimination, and hate. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
Tend to all of who journey of faith and who wait with patience for the fulfillment of healing promises. We especially pray, pray for Mary, Scott, Tim, Yvonne, Nancy, Di, Butch, Betty, Marlene, Terry, Rochelle, Harlan, David, Stan, and Ron. Grant perseverance to people doing physical and occupational therapy, people living with mobility concerns, and people facing chronic pain. Merciful God, receive our prayer. As you have loved us, so let us love one another. Empower fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, adoptive fathers, and chosen fathers to embody this gift of love for their children. Where these relationships are strained or broken, bring your comfort and peace, merciful God. Receive our prayer. With gratitude, we remember the saints who are now at home with you. Plant seeds of their wisdom and witness in your hearts that we grow in faith until we join them in your heavenly dwelling. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also with you. Let us share that peace one with another. And now, let us share our offerings because God keeps making things possible and keeps wanting us to practice generosity in all that we do and all the ways that God is with us. Let us share through our offerings. <coughs> this table with your very self 
and called us to the Feast of Plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here and your body for life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Please stand as you are able. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as our communion assistants all come forward. And reminders that we come up the center aisle and receive the bread on either side. Go on either side of the table to receive the wine or, or juice. And we do have gluten-free waivers. If for any reason you can't come forward, feel free to tell the ushers and we will bring it to you. And for the younger children who are not yet receiving communion, we would ask you to help them put their hands on their chest so that we can give them a blessing.
The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us join in singing our sending hymn. And we will just sing the first verse set forth by God's blessing. <clears throat> 